This is not my story to tell, but I'll tell it in the hopes that it helps Suzanne. I'm an avid off-roader. Part of that is going and traveling and, and videoing what we do. So there's an event that happens in Sand Hollow, Utah every year. And we were requested to be a guide on this. So what happens is uh, pe people come from all over the world and they line up in lines, right? And you, as a guide, you show them the trail, basically. You're assigned a trail and you go out and you guide 10, 15, 20 people sometimes on these off-road trails. And, and Sand Hollow is the desert. It's a lot of traction, so you would think it's not too complicated, but some of the situations that you can get in in Sand Hollow are very extreme. This is high desert. There's huge rocks, a lot of sand, and some of the traction that you can get off-roading, you can get your vehicle almost perpendicular. I mean, it's so much traction like sandpaper that you can get a vehicle to drive up a wall, straight up a wall, and over backwards if you're not careful. I was one of several guides on this, and they gave us this trail out at the back side of Sand Hollow. And we were going to meet Matt's off-road recovery. He was going to come along and be part of our group. So we get all the way back there. It's probably an hour just to drive where we needed to be. So this is way out in the middle of the nowhere. We're already in the middle of the desert when we start, but then we drive an hour more out into the middle of the desert. This trail is like right on the edge of this shelf, right? So you can see out in the distance on your left the whole time you're doing it, which is really amazing. It's beautiful. You can see for hundreds of miles out there, but you can't make any mistakes on this trail. And so we end up getting at the starting point of this trail. Matt's off-road recovery and his crew comes along, and I also have probably 15 people that I don't know behind me. But uh, one of them I do know because she comes out and wheels with me a lot in uh, East Tennessee to all of our fan rides that we have, and her name is Suzanne. We start this trail ride, beautiful scenery. It's a little bit over some people's skill level because when you're in these groups, you don't really know what you're going to get into. But at the same time, people, a lot of times people will sign up for things above their skill level. So a lot of times as a guide, you're having to guide these people through something that maybe their Jeep isn't quite capable of. And that's just part of, part of it. But everybody's doing pretty good. We're making our way through, through this trail. And we finally turn and we get up off of the, the cliff side, which is... Whew, you know, you don't want anybody to go off that. And we turn and we start making our way back and we're, we're driving and driving and we reach this, this Y, right? I've never even done this trail before. They tell you to go out and do this trail and we have like a little map, but the GPS coordinates on the map, it, it's not real specific on, on where you're at. It's just kind of like this area. And the, the sand blows around too and you don't, sometimes you don't even know if you're on the trail. But we get to this Y and we're like, is that the trail or is that the trail? We, we don't know. We're going to go to the left here. And I get on the radio and I tell everybody and I, I walk back too in case they don't have a radio. I'm like, okay, there's, I've walked up here and this is a fun spot. It looks like it might be fun for those who want to try something really difficult. But if you don't want to attempt it, I would recommend most of you go around the right side because there, there's a big giant rock left side, right side, you go around, meet at the top. So everybody who doesn't feel comfortable today, anybody who's had any issues today, which was most everybody, I said, go around to the right side of the rock and we'll meet you at the top. We go up, everything's, you know, pretty difficult, pretty difficult, but right at the edge, there's like this waterfall. It's like a, it's probably a five foot ledge, right? And to get out of it, you have to climb up and over this ledge. I'm in a buggy, but some of these people are not. And of course, I look back, everybody that I told to go around to the easy side, they're following, because they, they don't want to be the guy who didn't make the trail, right? So they're following, and I'm like, oh man, okay, we gotta spot everybody up this, which we'll get through it. So we're spotting, we're getting people up and over. It's, it's, it's really difficult because as you're climbing this, you're almost vertical. And if you were to flip over backwards, I mean, you're going to be like two or three times rolling down the mountain. 
So we get half, half of them up. In the group, there's this amazing girl. Her name is Suzanne. I think she's from uh, South Carolina. She had an accident a few years ago and she had lost an arm. She's driving a stick. She impresses people by driving a stick, Jeep Wrangler. So she has to, you know, do the stick and the steering wheel at the same time with one arm. You gotta know that's difficult, right? It's difficult in, in the city on the highway, let alone off-road when you're having to control multiple things at, at the same time. But she's doing good, she's real nervous. We're, we're guiding her through this. And she gets up on the last ledge and it's really steep. We're like, okay, at this point, you're almost there, but you don't. You can't move left, you can't move right, you're just gonna have to crawl straight up over the, the edge and then and then we're done, we're calling it a day. She gets up, it starts to, to spin, like there's not enough traction. And just split second, I mean, split second, it slips and it starts to go over backwards. I'm on the right side here, I can see that wheel coming up. All I did was say, hold on, hold on, it's going. It's the scariest thing I've ever seen. The Jeep flips and it lands smack on the top. That's only the first roll. When it hit the top, it had a fiberglass top on it. And the fiberglass top shattered into a million pieces. And then it goes over again. On the second roll, you hear this scream come out of the, this. it's the worst, worst imaginable scream that I've ever heard in my life. But you hear this scream and the Jeep rolls over one more time and, and stops. I'm almost afraid to, to go down there. Uh, I didn't even want to go look to see what was down there. But uh, she's still alive. We can hear her and people from the bottom that were filming from the bottom, including her husband, come up, which was uh, in and of itself ridiculously scary. But uh, her husband and her daughter were down there at the bottom as well. I start making my way down the mountain here. I, I immediately cut the camera off because that's not something that she filmed. While she was rolling over, so the first time she flipped over, the fiberglass top splintered and pieces of that fell in. The second time she rolled over, a piece of that fiberglass top was on the ground and it came up and cut right through her one good arm. And it, it went up through and then immediately back out. So she's just got this gaping hole in her arm bleeding everywhere. Luckily, down below in the Matt's Off-Road Recovery Group was uh, another group. They had training for this kind of situation. And they bring up gear and they start getting her patched up. She had also been concussed as well. She hit her head on a rock going over on one of those rolls. So she's only got one arm and she can't move her, her one good arm. And her attitude though was amazing. You know, she was apologizing to everybody. She's, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to do this. I, I can't believe I'm holding you guys up. It was so scary. They patched her up. We had to call for a helicopter. It was, it was a really bad situation. Um, we didn't know if she was gonna lose her other arm. We didn't know how bad she had been hit in the head. She's bleeding from her head as well. So we're waiting around and apparently this is commonplace and everybody up top on the top of the mountain forms this big giant circle, which is really cool for the helicopter to see because they're just flying over the desert. They don't know where to land, but they spot us. They land the helicopter and uh, they get her in the helicopter and take her away. She ended up having to have a bunch of surgeries on her arm. She lost a little bit of control of her thumb, but otherwise uh, she made a, a really decent recovery as, as best as you can. And she's not letting that stop her. So she is rebuilding what she calls baby Jeep. So this is, this is her baby. She calls it baby Jeep. She's rebuilding this Jeep. And from that video, uh, we started a GoFundMe for her, and we were able to raise, um, I think, over $13,000 for her to rebuild this baby Jeep and for her surgeries that she's, she's still doing to this day.
I'm super pumped to announce that in 2024, VinWiki is partnering with Bridgestone. So throughout the year, you're gonna hear some great stories from their business, some awesome tire testing and things like that that we're gonna do. I've had a lot of Bridgestone and Firestone products over the years and love them all. I know that you will too, but I want you to check out their Potenza line of tires for sports cars, supercars, and hypercars. Whatever your needs, whether it's ultimate track performance, road performance, or all season performance, there is a Potenza tire for you. So check them out at the link in the description below and let us know what you think.